Welcome to Ben Rag Violin. Paganini's Caprice number three. So, two obvious challenges, the octaves at the beginning and end, and then the rapid semiquavers. Everything is sostenuto, so you need really good legato, really good sustained sound. So uh, let's give it a go from the beginning. So first we have the octaves, which are mainly done between one three or one three two four. So the important thing when we're doing these octaves is that the thumb, although it has to be mobile, needs to be able to stay still a lot of the time as well, so that the hand and the fingers are working around the thumb more, which makes everything more possible. So we'll go through and I'll just uh, stop sometimes just to clarify. big descending scale now, all on one three, the thumb is not really going to move much, if at all, even when I go all the way down to lower positions. This enables me to get back up, get down and up easily. So all that time I've kept my thumb pretty much up on the body. And just let the hand do the work. That was ending with a long slur, so it's great to go with Paganini's original bowings, try to meet the challenges, which makes often much more creative musically as well. Up the octave. So you've noticed there have been a lot of double trills in the fingered octaves. You've got to have a really secure one and three and a strong, clear two and four, dropping and lifting. Let's go on. Again, my thumb is not needing to move here. Now I'm ready to go up. Even here, when I go all the way back to the G sharp, I'm going to try and keep my thumb as high as I can so I can easily get up on these finger octaves. More double trills. So now onto the presto, semiquavers, all sorts of lengths of slurs. Again, a lot of additions formalize these bowings. You often get them doing shorter slurs, more equal, more starting on the bar. Try to avoid that. Try and look at the original of what Paganini wrote and really try and go for that. So much more creative, more challenging, but this is Paganini Caprices. So when he writes presto, he means fast, right? Um, in the left hand, very important to have good connections, so this kind of practice. In the bow, fluid, changes of strings, changes of bows. We need to be good at adjusting our bow speed, so when we want the slower bow, we've got to move more into the bridge, into the string. Faster bow speed, we can move away from the bridge, uh, lighter and faster, and faster bow. So... We have this rapid string crossings when you're going to need a lot of forearm action as well. So we'll get through this. So let's try. Still, the slur continues, but we need to get over from D to E. Now we have the accents that he throws in as well. Now we 
get a, a rapid string, constant string crossing bow in. This one, so nice left hand. The bow needs to be going across nicely. So keep the arm on the higher level. Let the forearm and the fingers move you across. So finishing there with unison. 4-1, so the thumb needs to be in the slightly higher position so the one can reach back. So let's go. So this takes us to a famous passage. We have this octave between two and four. We've got to stretch back now. Ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth. So the one's going to really do the stretching back, the rest of the hand is staying still. You see the kind of shape your one has to get to, to stretch back. Yeah? And the four, of course, has to have a really good resistance. The lower the one goes, the more the four pulls up to resist. Yeah? Otherwise that's going to go very out, out of tune. Uh, in the bow, we again have this rapid string crossing, so same idea. For the rest of this semi-quaver area, I mean the thumb's really just following the hand naturally, but that's an example where you need your thumb pretty stationary and you're relying on the stretch. Like I say, the rest of the time we're just kind of flying around, the thumb's really more following the hand. So we got there, now more accents off the beat. Again, notice how the slurs keep changing. So we have a shorter slur now with the accent. Now a longer slur, so that's an example where we need to get the bow more into the string, into the bridge, to survive it, to keep the sound. So now we have the rapid string crossing still in the same slur. Practice the left arm. Make sure nice relations. The bow again. So arm higher. Let everything else do the work. More accents off the beat. Again, lots of string crossing, so this is the left hand pattern. And in the bow. Taking us back to a similar start like the beginning. Again, a very long slur, get into the bridge, into the string. And we go on. Very long slur there. Back to like the beginning. to the octaves like we started with. Just when you thought your hand was tired out from the semi-quavers, he throws another line of octaves in. So this is the finish. Our thumb is perfectly positioned now to continue up the octave. Staying up, we just need to go straight over to two and four, and back up. And to finish, more trills. Thanks for watching. Next time, number four.